Welcome everybody. It's the Nurburgring combined at Gay. Gay. Uh, um, one second. See if I can figure this out real quick. Germans. G E was it a E? I think it was an A right there actually. G E S A M T. And then is that right? R T. No, no, no. Okay. Um, T S T. And then R E C K E. I'm pretty sure that's. Okay. Let's see. This is not what I'm looking for. Try switching those around. Old switcheroo. Switch back on it. Hit a switch back on it. It's the same thing. Okay. Uh, Google Translate. It is. Google Translate. And then copy and paste that thing. Total distance. Gesamtstrecke. 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 Sounded different that time. Gesamtstrecke. 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 Okay. Welcome everybody. We are at the Nurburgring combined gay Sam stick. Honestly, dude, I'm I'm fucking trash at this track anyway. I am going to walk you guys through a few of these races. So first one, we're starting in P13 as car number eight. Joey behind us, just two places behind us. Neither of us have qualified. A lot of people haven't qualified. So we're kind of uh, just at the mercy of what I remember of this track from about a year ago. I'm not a... Uh, what, I honestly wasn't even super confident in the track back then. We are going to lose a position heading to the line. It looks like we might lose another. We have Joey and car number 13 kind of to our inside here. Up ahead, car number 18. He had contact on both sides. Ends up with that guy spinning off, so he gained a position there. Then he's kind of going side by side with that green guy ahead of us. We are going to settle behind him. And by the time we are coming through the chicane, car number nine is going to also get into an incident with the same guy sliding sideways across the track. We'll pick up that position. Car number 11 behind us gets a really good run as we did slow down for that guy who was sliding sideways through the chicane. We're going to let him through. Heading on to the Nordschleife for the first time. 17 is up our inside and we end up kind of trying to go around. The outside doesn't really work for us. We're in the grass and we take a shit ton of this curve. Absolutely launches us into the air and uh, takes some extra contact from that as well managed to end all of that while remaining facing forward which is fantastic we do lose um just about every position that you can possibly lose i think we're down at this point into p19 and our steering is damaged as you can tell we're struggling to drive in a straight line and just skip ahead to the end where um we actually end up crossing the line just basically behind everybody we had too much damage to be competitive our uh, steering was pretty fucked up. We do finish in front of this guy, though. So we actually finished in P18, moving up one position uh, throughout that entire race. But it was only by virtue of him wrecking. So that one's going to hurt quite a bit. We do gain safety rating still. Into the next one, though, wasting no time here. Once again, starting in P13, no qualifying. Uh, car number 11 in this one, so it should be a faster split. Number 13 behind us swings to the inside, swings to the outside, decides to stay there. So we have the inside for turn one. Slowing down, um, just kind of taking this first corner safely. It's really just about getting through this first corner, which isn't going to uh, happen to me today. In this case, I'm not able to get around that first corner. 18 from downtown, giving us a nice little spin. That will send us to the very back of the pack and when we rejoin we see some lights and there's an accident there we're going to drive around it 18 pulling into the road in front of us we make contact bump him out the way just give him a nice little bump on the boot uh see you later son and gain that well i guess we gained two positions there there were two cars spun around so finally on to the norwich life but we don't have any critical damage we are able to make headway car number 13 up ahead riding the tail of this guy number 20 they're going to make contact going into the first kind of sector on the norwich life but both of them running in running into the wall 13 on the left 20 on the right we're going to pick up the position from 20 13 manages to get back onto the track before we catch him and uh, we're going to come through this first sector behind him as we head into fluke platz i'm not sure if that's how you say it but that's how i'm going to say it for today car ahead number 13 into the dirt that's going to slow his run down quite a lot i'm looking for space on the left side he starts to pull over there it scares me and i take a shit ton of this curb absolutely 50 50 grinding and i'm not able to hold that one into the wall i go and that one is going to give us critical damage so end of that race uh just as bad actually worse than the one before that our eye reading is really start to starting to have a dent in it and I'm not even going to show the beginning of this next race because I'm going to run into the wall before I get halfway through the Norwich Lifa. Uh, 
just into the chicane. Number seven holding a sick drift there. And then I totally forgot that this was the jump. I thought this was the flat out section after it. So I full throttle through the jump into the wall. Obviously, I'm not going to get it stopped there. My front wheel is severely damaged. And that will be another one down. So we are continuing to fall. Safety rating taking quite the hit. I rating, same thing on that end of the spectrum. Next race. And honestly, guys, it's going to get no better. Coming through the carousel. We're almost through one lap. 23 almost drives onto the carousel. I have to slow down a lot and kind of get onto that curb on the inside, which you don't want to do. But he does realize that I'm there eventually and pulls off of the road. Just a few corners later, I take way too much of this curb flying through the air and into the wall I go. That is the flat out section that I thought um, I was going through last time when I was going through the jump. Either way, we absolutely tank from that one and it just wasn't looking like our death. This is a race I actually did today, so I slept on it. I came back. We're car number eight. We're starting in P10. Once again, no qualifying. There were only a few people who had actually qualified at this point. I feel like everybody kind of tends to accept the fact that you'll be ahead of people who you will be ahead of, and you'll be behind people who you will be behind. 12, sending it up into a three-wide situation. He is in the middle. I have the inside, which turns to the outside for the next corner. Super, super tight angle for me there. I have to slow down a lot, trying to dart around the outside, as it is a very wide corner for me. 12 has successfully managed to move forward. Uh, just a few cars ahead. 16 is going to pit maneuver the mystery machine off the track. We will pick up that position for free, so we have lost one, and we have gained one. I believe we are still in P10 at the moment. Nine looking to go around the outside. Very hard to do on that corner. And it's going to end up giving me the position as I have the inside. I have the camber. I have less distance to travel. And for that corner specifically, it is going to give you the inside uh, quite a lot. Unless somebody really sends it deep and comes back for a very hard double apex, which he did not do. So behind us, car number nine. Behind him is Joey, car number 10. We are cars number eight, nine, and 10 in P10, 11, and 12. Looks like the car ahead was kind of looking for a move into the chicane, but ends up backing out and we are about to head on to the Norwich Life for the first time in this race. He opens that up very dramatically. That was quite the entrance to this track. Um, this uh, The Norwich Life is not a track that I am very comfortable with. I've only driven it a few times. I've only, I think I've only done three or four races previous to this week. Now, I have done a couple of races so far this week, but you saw how those went. So definitely not super comfortable on the track. I would be very happy just to finish the race. Following behind car number 12 as everybody's kind of getting backed up through this first bit of um, the Nordschleife. I don't know if that's how you say it. Nordschleife? Nordschleife? It doesn't really matter. I'm sure even if I said it correctly, it would still sound wrong to the German here. So I'm not even going to try. Been through that. Following 12 into Flugplatz, Flugplatz, and everybody is still in the same little row here. Joey is putting a lot of pressure on car number nine behind. We are going to remain in fifth gear. Up ahead, car number four, the car ahead of him is going to go into the dirt, slow the run down. He's looking for a move to the left, but before we go any further, I would like to wager your like and subscription and clicking of the bell icon on my girlfriend making the octopus in a bucket. My girlfriend is gonna be throwing, she's gonna be throwing the octopus. I'm gonna be holding the bucket. And if she makes the octopus in the bucket, you have to subscribe. She actually had like eight shots off camera and she still let me down. So yeah, you're free. You don't have to subscribe right now. Continuing along, Ford gets pushed into this curb, goes absolutely flying. Like, I'm going to show you a bunch of tr angles like it's triple X. This is the, from the guy behind. Look at that. Oh, my God. He got like two feet of air. And um, that's going to, I mean, here's my view. <laughs> Jokes aside, that's incredibly dangerous. We have to slow down as he is spinning down uh, one of the longer straights of the track. And Joey is going to take advantage of that, skipping ahead of car number nine, so he gains that position. Lightning McQueen, keep an eye on Lightning McQueen. He's going to play an important role later. So the uh, situation has kind of changed as car number nine has fallen back two positions. Joey is beginning to be put under pressure by Lightning McQueen. I am still chasing down car number 12 in the uh, Red Tiger um, livery. For those of you who know what Red Tiger is, you know, and you're goaded. Shit goes crazy. Uh, we're going to catch up to this guy through, I'm honestly, I don't know what any of these corners are called. I'm going to guess that that's corner 20, 20, 21. I'm just going to guess that that's corner 21. At this point in the race, the car ahead of car number 12 seems to be slowing down a bit. So that is putting P7 in my head as a real possibility. We are currently in P9 as we gain the position from the guy flying over the curve. So this is P, um, P8 and P7 ahead of us. 
which P7 would be a pretty good result for us as car, I think we're car number 10. And yeah, I would be happy with that. I, honestly, I would be happy to cross the line anywhere near the rest of the group. We have a very good run onto Apex Lava here, coming down the center straight, I guess you would call this. Not gonna be able to make it work. Similar thing happening behind us as Lightning McQueen is looking to get around Joey. Joey ends up kind of being forced to take a narrow line into that corner. We get through there just fine. Still right behind Lava, uh, Apex Lava. We're actually going to lift and slightly break there to give him some more space. He also breaks, which was a little bit surprising to me. I don't think it was necessary for him to break. But uh, coming around towards the carousel, we get a pretty decent run honestly apex got a really good run through there the whole little group is all pretty close to each other and we're all about to send it into the carousel together unfortunately apex lava gets a really poor run uh kind of in the middle of the carousel and the car ahead of him begins to pull away and i have to kind of slow down uh you know you can't really pass somebody on the carousel truly you, you I, I don't think you I honestly don't think you can. I don't know if that's possible. 15, just a couple of cards ahead of us. I think this is P6. He's going to spin out, bounce across the track, take out P7. And as we approach this accident, we are able to see it and kind of gauge it a little bit. The hole just barely remains on the right side. Joey and Lightning McQueen work together to punt 15 across the track and back into the right direction. That's going to hold Lightning McQueen back. Car number nine takes his position back. So he ended up gaining three positions through there as he made it through that accident very cleanly. And uh, Joey is now going to be behind car number nine, although Joey does have steering damage. So he's not going to be able to drive at full pace anymore. I was very fortunate to find my way through there following car number 12 and just barely fitting through that hole heading into YouTube corner and we have a decent amount of space behind us although this uh, is about the point in the track where my pace begins to fall off and you could say that it is because of lack of practice of the second half of the Nordschleife and you could say that I have a lack of practice because I still struggle to make it this far um, frequently coming up to the jump braking probably a little bit too early from me and as well as downshifting a little bit too early I think I was just over slowing overall through that corner car number 12 I don't think he's the best uh kind of control group or thing to uh real, to compare myself to his pace wise at least I do believe that I was faster than this guy and I I'm honestly not up to pace where I need to be definitely breaking too much into that corner but I do find a good line um via over slowing as much as I did so it allows me to kind of keep the gap similarly the car behind is closing up all of the while I think by the time he got through that accident, he was probably about two seconds behind us. We are about to head onto the Dottinger, which is the extremely long straight at the end of this track. And uh, slipstream matters a lot. You want to keep somebody at least about a second and a half to two seconds behind you. There is car number nine. He's closed up that gap a lot. Joey is now behind uh, Roxy as he, like I said, has steering damage. He'll end up pulling into the pits and that'll be his race done. We are firmly in the slipstream of Apex Lava, pulling to the outside, not even halfway through the straight. So we have a lot of time to get in front of him. As we started the straight, probably four, three to four tenths behind him, and that's that is prime time. Like nobody can really do anything about that uh, to stop me from take, overtaking this guy. He is firmly behind me, uh, sitting behind me, and we will come across, breaking at the end of the curb on the right side, second gear to finish out the lap and lap one completed with no incidents this was an absolute miracle for me so coming across to start lap two car number 12 a little bit behind us car number nine a little bit further back blink and you'll miss it that was the safety car for anybody wondering what i was talking about there if you're if you're uh, listening to this with just headphones in then uh it was i showed the safety car that's what happened so you didn't get the opportunity to blink and miss it so i'm just going to tell you Onto the Nordschleife, uh, we're in the same order. The car number nine has kind of closed the gap, so we're riding in a much tighter pack of three at this point. I really, really have to get on the move here as I am ahead of car number 12. I want to pull away from him. I believe I have the pace. I'm hoping that he can hold back car number 12, or uh, excuse me, car number nine behind him, and it'll give me some freedom to really run away with it as I feel a lot more comfortable on the Nordschleife than I do on the GP, and I think I am faster on this part of the track than car number 12, so I need to use that to my advantage. Coming around Flugplatz, and we are keeping the pedal to the floor. Sadly, car number 12 moves over to the right side to allow 9 space to go through, which I am punching my dashboard inside of my car looking at my relative right now because that totally foiled my plan of having 12 slow down 9, but that's okay. Uh, we have to make do and make it work. 
shifting down to third gear, trail braking really early, trying to keep the minimum speed as high as possible through there. It makes a massive difference. Uh, there's pretty long straight through there as well, braking at that sign, down to fourth gear, gonna push it around here, push it way too deep, shifting down to third early, down to second, and we're trying to salvage this corner as we really missed. Uh, you should be a lot closer to the right at the start of that corner so kind of fucked that one up that's okay car number nine is beginning to close on us through the very very quick corner that leads onto the very long middle straight and i'm massively over slow here i'm just i'm not comfortable sending it i would rather over slow honestly than under slow and end up flying off the track so that is going to put car number nine a little bit more firmly into my slipstream and it's a really long straight this is going to help him catch up quite a bit, uh, but that's not the worst of it because we're coming up onto the carousel, and as I've said before, kind of the carousel and everything past that is where my pace really begins to completely fall off. I have a lot of work to do there. And looking in my rear view, I know that I have a lot of work ahead of me just in this race because this guy is flying up behind me. I get a decent run through there. Um, it's, it's not really going to make a difference that... That corner, unless he's right on me, you know, he's just going to be able to catch up or fall away from me on a different corner. Heading towards the carousel, a little bit of oversteer as we are really pushing it right now. We have this guy behind us. I want to, I mean, realistically, I feel like he's just going to pass me on the dotting her unless he makes a huge mistake or unless I just pull something crazy out of my ass. I'm really just trying to stay on the track and hoping that, you know, maybe I could give myself a chance to defend onto the dotting her and then run away on the next lap. I'm not totally sure what the plan is right now. It's still in development. There's a lot of things uh, at play, a lot of different factors. That was my watch. Excuse that. Into fifth gear, braking slightly into fourth, totally missed the apex, should be on the curb on the left there, kind of missed the apex as well there, should be a lot more on that curb on the right, braking down to third gear, I am over slowing here once again, and this is going to be somewhere, on this occasion, it doesn't really make a difference, uh, but foreshadowing, so that corner, remember, I over slow, foreshadowing. As we come up to YouTube corner, another corner I'm not super comfortable on, and watching his lines, he's definitely turning in a lot later than me. I'm sitting myself a bit deep on the exit. Watching his line here, he's opening it up wider as well, and these are all things that I'm kind of noting after the fact, you know, watching this back and commentating. These are things that obviously I wasn't able to see during the race. Some adjustments I could make to the line. Up to the jump, down to fourth gear, get on the throttle as early as you can. Slight oversteer moment there, or not really oversteer, but just a correct, correctional, correcting goal steering flat out all of the way through here these turns are absolutely insane my wheelbase goes nuts every single time we get to this part of the track and i'm sure i probably lose a few bolts every single time as well breaking at the end of that curb which i think was too early he breaks a little bit after and he's still breaking lighter than me on both of these occasions absolutely closing up the gap here this those two corners we just went through are my worst two corners with the third worst probably being this next corner which leads on to the straight so it's the most important corner, or excuse me, leads onto the Dottinger. Arguably the most important corner on the track. If you mess this one up, or uh, somebody has an advantage on the, of, above on you, an advantage over you, so many different ways to say things, and so many of them are wrong. Obviously, this guy got a better run than me. He's in the slipstream. This is the terrifying view of him creeping up on me, and right as he gets up on me, he's actually just going to bump me. He's not going to go around me, so we are riding down the dotting art together. He's pushing me all of the way down, which, honestly, if you know, you know. You know why he's doing this, and you know what this means for me, and I'm pretty sad about it. I realized at that point that I was truly outclassed, and uh, the reason is he has so much confidence in his pace over me that he's just going to wait for the next lap to pass me on the Dottinger because there will be nothing I can do about it. Um, and my combat to this is that I either need to pull away a shit ton from him. If I don't pull away enough, then I'm gonna have to pull off a very cheeky move and we'll get into that later. So through the GP circuit, not super comfortable at this part of the circuit. However, on this specific lap, I don't know what happened, but I just began to really hit these corners as nicely as I could. I was beating my optimum on every single corner, getting a very good exit out of here. He totally messes up his exit, sends it in too deep. That's gonna help give us a bit of crucial separation. Riding as much over that curb as you can. Don't wanna go too far to the outside. Very light braking here. It's just to get the car turned in. It's not really to slow the car down all that much. You just wanna get that angle. And onto uh, this little straight that leads into the chicane. We have a pretty good, uh, pretty good sized gap behind us. However, that gap will completely diminish as we head onto the Norwich Life of Braking, probably about 
50 meters too early and that is going to put him directly back onto our bumper and now i know this is the first part of the nordschleife is where i feel most comfortable but i feel like this guy is probably a bit more comfortable than me and sure enough i mean the gap hasn't really changed at this point we are on the middle the center straight i don't know the back straight i suppose and he is right on my tail i'm feeling quite helpless and that move that i was talking about earlier basically before the dotting her there is the second carousel if i can just go around the outside of that second carousel and allow him to go ahead of me it will give me the slipstream going onto the dotting her and then i will be able to pass him so that's my plan. He's going to stay behind me because he thinks that he's going to pass me. And then I'm going to go off of the second carousel. However, I mistake the first carousel for the second carousel. Drive off of that and into the wall. It does put me at a perfect gap behind him. However, the only issue here is that I know that he's fast. He knows he's fast. He knows that I think he's faster than me. Uh, or, or he knows that I know that he's faster than me. And I mean, honestly, even if it was just thinking, it kind of is the same thing. It gets in my head the same way. Either way... I am terrified because I know that he's quicker than me on the second part of this track and now he is able to fully run. He only needs about a second and a half, two second gap leading on to the Dottinger. So I really have to perform here if I want to stay in his slipstream and have an opportunity at getting that position back leading on to the Dottinger. That is, or um, leading out of the Dottinger, excuse me. This is the battle for P7, just a reminder. And you can see how far he is beginning to pull away from me already. It's only been about, I don't know, maybe a minute through YouTube corner, and this is where the difference really becomes visual. I turn in too early once again here, which on this instance I don't go deep, but I do have to wait to get onto the power slightly later as we are making our way around the lap in the full flat out section. I mean, he's about probably a second, 1.7 seconds ahead of me there. Onto the Dottinger, and it's grown, if anything. He is pretty damn far from me, and yeah, this was sad. I felt pretty helpless and this is kind of what the Nordschleifer does to you you know if you don't practice enough you will be rendered helpless this is the fight for p4 up ahead of us car 7 looking to go around the outside 16 pit maneuvering him into the wall i mean that i don't know who that's on i'm not going to spend the time to figure it out 7 manages to continue in a straight line so gaining p4 16 is going to drive across the track as i come through i barely managed to avoid that having to go into the grass still get an, a uh, four times for contact i'm not quite sure uh what he was thinking there i, I know he was upset but yeah, a bit ridiculous of a rejoin. Either way, we do gain a position from that, so we actually move back up into P7, which I was happy about. I'll take a four times for a position any day of the week. Here are the results. Uh, a really satisfying final race to end it on. Finally got a good result, gained I rating, gained safety rating, and just had a good race overall there was some good strategy there were a lot of people wrecking giving me free positions but you know what that's the norge life that's that's just how it is that'll always happen if you guys enjoyed this video and you want to support me please check out some of my other videos or even go check out my channel i'm sure there's a lot of stuff there that you will enjoy as well